welcome everyone. Um, welcome to Ignite 2021, our on-demand industry panel. My name is Katie Martucci. I'm our employer relations and career advisor in the Center for Student Professional Development Career Services Office. Um, this panel today is focused on media and communication and is part of our um, career exploration series, which you can check out more about on our SharePoint site. Um, we also have industry panels from 2020 that you can take a look at too. We're very excited to have each of our panelists who are here with us today to share more about their career story. Um, and please note that they are all willing to connect with you. So if you'd like to um, follow up with someone that you've heard from today, just reach out to our office, cspd at delvalve.edu, and we can help you get in touch. So to, to kick us off, I'd like to ask each one of our panelists to introduce themselves briefly. I have, um, in order of my screen here, Brian, Alexa, and then Jennifer. So if you just want to jump in and I'll mute myself while you're all while you're all sharing. Thanks, Katie. I uh, appreciate you having us here. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, Brian Roth. Uh, I am a former newspaper reporter uh, turned communications and marketing professional at uh, Duke University, uh, now Duke University Health System. I uh, do a host of uh, writing, um, photography, video productions in my background, and I also work as a freelance writer and editor covering the U.S. beer industry. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexa Johnson. I'm the Senior Marketing and Communications Manager for Visit Bucks County. It's the Tourism Bureau for Bucks County, Pennsylvania, where Delval is actually located. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited to be here. I've been at Visit Bucks for over five years. Before that, I was in public relations at a very small beauty and fashion PR firm in New York City. So I've kind of crossed industries a little bit, and I'm excited to talk about that. Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Bacclini. I also am a former newspaper reporter. I started in the Percocy News Herald and the Southerton Independent. Um, shortly after graduating from Penn State. I now work for the Harbor Group, which was actually just announced this morning, is being merged with Finsbury Glover Herring, which is a strategic consulting, uh, communications consulting firm. I personally specialize in digital as well as public diplomacy um, and work with clients in the DC area. And I, yeah, I think that's everything. <laughs> Thank you everyone for those great intros. Um, I think to get us started, started, if you can just talk a little bit about how you first got started in your career, like take us through briefly your journey. And we can go in the same order if that's okay. Sure. Um, I'm one of those weird people who knew what I wanted to do when I was a kid. Uh, I, I originally and did, I wanted to work in radio, uh, and I did work in radio uh, as a sports broadcaster in, co uh, in high school, college, and then immediately after, uh, but found that newspapers was going to be a bit more kind to where I could choose to be geographically. Uh, I grew up in upstate New York, uh, worked in newspapers in the Finger Lakes and Rochester, um, and it really was just a case of, uh, I love listening to stories. Uh, I love telling stories and finding a way to bring that to life in a medium that connects with people in, in real time in interesting ways was just something that I think really interested me um, and gave myself and gave me lots of excitement every day when I got to do that, get that newspaper slapped down on your desk uh, every day. Uh, and so I think there were a lot of ways to enter that profession outside of just, you know, me being a six-year-old and deciding this is what I want to do. Uh, if you love writing or just kind of uh, find yourself excelling and trying to connect or enjoying connecting with people. Uh, those are great gateways to think about how you can uh, get into different kinds of media, uh, whether it's traditional or not. Cool. Um, so I graduated from James Madison University with a degree in media arts and design. And I too always kind of knew what I wanted to do when I grew up. I loved magazines and I wanted to be like Devil Wears Prada, the editor of Seventeen Magazine or something. Um, and I I'm from born and raised in New Jersey. And I had a few interviews in New York City. That was like the dream. 
Um, but then I found that those magazines pay like nothing. So, and I was going to be commuting from New Jersey. So it was just way too complicated um, to make work out. I ended up connecting with a fellow JMU graduate who knew somebody in the PR world. And I started working as a freelancer. So I just went in two days a week to the city for this small PR firm where that focused on fashion and beauty. And it was so much fun. And I didn't even know that it was an industry because I was so focused on the writing side, but I didn't realize how much these PR companies or how much these magazines and newspapers and whatnot rely on the PR people um, to get like new ideas for stories and whatnot. So then a position eventually opened up and I started full time there. I worked there for about two years and then it kind of came down to like personal life. Do I want to move to New York? Do I not? And I decided that I didn't. I was just too much of a like country beach girl from Jersey. Uh, so I found this job at Visit Bucks online, just on Indeed.com actually. And I had two or three interviews uh, what really attracted me to the job was that it was in the travel and tourism realm, and I myself love to travel, so I just thought, no, well, let me give it a shot, and I got it, and now I've been there for over five years, and I started as a public relations manager, and I grew my way up to being the senior marketing manager, and my job has really evolved because it is such a small company, and you'll find when you work for small companies that you wear a lot of hats. Um, it's just a very small team. So, you know, I, I do everything from media work, but I also manage our photo and video productions. I do a little bit of our blogger program. I ran our internship program. Um, and then, you know, when COVID hit, I got new responsibilities. So you just never know what's going to happen when you work for a small team. Um, but that is kind of my background. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And I'm glad that you sort of mentioned how networking played a little bit of a role in your trajectory. And then also even just like how you found your current job. Um, yeah, definitely. I think Indeed is actually really helpful um, or those job engines too. You just never know what you're going to find. Sure. Yeah, it's definitely um, job searching is oh, it's a job in and of itself. And there's so many different ways to go about it. So I like that you kind of mentioned those angles there. Go ahead, Jen. Yeah, sure. Um, so I mentioned that I was a reporter shortly after undergrad at the at local newspapers um, close to my hometown. And I that wasn't really my ideal job. When I was going through college, um, I studied abroad three times. Um, so I also was very passionate about international travel and sort of how people change and evolve through those experiences. Um, but I did find a lot of value in working for a local newspaper. I learned, I really honed my skills, I think, in kind of finding interesting storylines um, in seemingly mundane uh, activities. Like I would cover sort of annual local events um, and school board meetings that were very dysfunctional, but that's another story. <laughs> Um, and just kind of finding the human element and kind of helping to interview uh, really fascinating local people that um, I previously kind of didn't see the richness there. And I think that translated into all of my jobs since that role. Um, I also applied to a position, I think, on higheredjobs.com in New York City um, to be the social media program officer for the Fulbright program, which was very exciting. Um, and they actually loved that I had worked for a local newspaper. They were running a Fulbright is local campaign at the time and also kind of helping to tell the stories of American Fulbrighters uh, from local communi communities around the US. So you never know what kind of experience people are looking for. So I definitely recommend just applying to anything that interests you, even if it doesn't fit the mold of what you always envisioned for yourself, um, because that job and that sort of leap to New York City opened a lot of doors for me um, and was really kind of exhilarating. Our office was right across from the UN. Um, so that was kind of fun, kind of walking up to see the UN 
every morning. Um, and through that role, I met a lot of people um, and then actually took a job on the State Department side um, running social media. Um, and most recently, just about two years ago, I uh, took a job as director of digital at a boutique PR firm in DC um, that I never would have guessed there were firms out there that specialize in public diplomacy. Um, and I think that's one of Katie's other questions. So I'll, I might hold on my, <laughs> my thread here, but <laughs> that's kind of how I got to where I am now. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think something I'm hearing from each one of you is like this running theme of there's like a an openness or a curiosity about what's next and um, what what options might be available and 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 um, even like pretty big geographical changes and like taking some big steps um, and being open to that. But uh, aside from that, maybe like can you talk about any skills that skills or qualities that are really required of you in your role. And it can be broad or it can be specific um, to kind of get students thinking about what they can be cultivating in themselves. Yeah, I, I think I can connect something that the three of us have talked about. Um, one stems, uh, you know, Jennifer, I, I think you can certainly connect to this is that interest in just communicating and building relationships with people. Uh, and as newspaper reporters, uh, or, you know, Alexa, if it's a case of, you know, connecting with people and interesting them coming to visit, um, it is a relationship building business at the at the end of the day. And so I think, it comes down to a comfort level of just talking to strangers in a way, you know, from a professional side, that's something I, I literally have to do as part of what I do for work. Uh, personally, that's also something that interests me. I just like to, to meet people and talk to people. Uh, so I think whatever profession that you enter, you know, this is the classic networking scenario, right? Is that just trying to find ways to, to meet new people that can be very valuable um, from just a skill side. Um, one of the first things that I heard in my journalism school classes in college was that going into newspapers was going to be the least favorable financial decision I could ever make with my career, uh, which was true. But uh, that was immediately followed by saying that knowing how to write and write well can be transferable to any field. And that kind of skill set, whether it is actually in media, uh, if it's in public relations, uh, if it's in higher education or healthcare, these things translate. So I think working on that skill, and you don't have to go into profession specific to writing to work better to become a better writer. Uh, I think those two things really stand out as ways that have opened up doors for me and also helped me connect with other people. I would agree with that. I would say, yeah, communicating, um, having strong communication skills and being able to network and talk to strangers is such a plus. Um, and then just overall having I don't, like a, a good creative vibe about yourself. <laughs> um, just in terms of like for my job with PR, I'm always thinking of ways to like put our businesses into the media. And since I'm meeting people all the time, like for example, I just met the owner of some, a restaurant and then a pitch comes across like my email of, oh, we're looking for chefs for this really early segment to do um, in next week. Do you know anybody? And I just immediately thought of them because I just met them. They would totally love this opportunity. Um, so just when you do meet people thinking of like, but, niche can I like fit them into when something comes across my desk um, and that's mainly for like the PR side of things but I think that and the writing skills and the um, like professionalism about you too really goes a long way I think those are my top skills yeah Alexa I think that's a good point because um, I also just recently graduated with my master's in business affairs uh, with a specialization in digital marketing. And I actually uh, was referred to my current position through someone in my program. 
um, who we connected with in class, sort of late night grad school class at like 9.30 at night. Um, she was always dressed very like chicly and I wanted to kind of be like her. Um, so <laughs> when I was looking for a new position, I, I noticed her firm and I reached out to her and it turned out um, that they had a very relevant niche to my skill set. Um, and I think just having worked together in on school projects, um, she knew that I worked hard and I was um, really excited and my sort of personality would kind of fit the firm. Um, she referred me without really asking any questions or sort of knowing me in, in the work setting. Um, so I think just, um, you know, if you carry yourself professionally and you're reliable and helpful to colleagues, um, and if you do pursue a graduate degree um, with your classmates, um, I think that can really open a lot of doors. And I also, um, just to give you, continuing to use her as an example, of course, would have her back if she ever needed help um, with a new role um, or a reference or anything like that. I also wanted to mention uh, in terms of skill set, particularly for social media jobs, um, I think it's really important. When I was graduating school uh, 10 years ago from undergrad, social media was still pretty new. During my senior year, there was a new class at Penn State, um, multimedia journalism, and it was sort of like the brave new world, trying to figure out how to storytell on Facebook. And I think that um, you know, my bosses, particularly at my first few jobs, knew nothing really about social media or maximizing it as a tool. Um, and I think like what's really important is that throughout the past 10 years, I worked to sort of improve my skills. Um, today, I think it's really important to uh, be comfortable processing big data in particular because being able to produce uh, cohesive analytics reports to demonstrate the impact of your work is really important. Um, and I know that's something that I wasn't comfortable as, with as a communication professional, but it is something that we look for when we're hiring uh, account coordinators, for example, at my firm. Um, just being comfortable and being able to kind of digest that data and, um, you know, create visual uh, monthly reports, for example, to demonstrate you know, what messages and digital assets really performed well across channels, um, because there's a lot you can actually learn from it, um, even if it might be a little intimidating. I think the, the last time I took a math class was like junior year of high school. Uh, but uh, I will say that uh, to echo exactly what, what Jennifer's saying, the value in, uh, if you're looking at social media, for example, the value in just going beyond what the, the like <laughs> is uh, actually downloading uh, Excel sheets of reports can help you kind of gain an advantage in talking about things in ways that, um, that other people maybe don't. Um, but outside of, uh, of the math part of it all, I, the thing that I think strikes me most about what we're all talking about, and this is just like on a basic human level, whether you want to get into something communications or not, I'm hearing themes of curiosity and empathy as like key parts of what can help you both uh, meet people as well as excel at what you do. So like for me, curiosity comes from like, I just, I love asking questions and I love learning from people uh, and empathy in the way that you can connect with other people. You know, that's whether that is telling a story or helping you network or better understand, you know, topics or themes that can make you better at your job. Having those things front of mind, both as a human and as a professional, just always being curious and knowing that there's more to learn uh, can be really, really valuable. Thanks, everyone. Such wisdom in this group. I love it. I want to be mindful of time, and I have a really important question to ask. So um, this may be our last one. We'll see how it goes, but take your time with this. Um, so think about a professional obstacle. You might call it a failure or not, but think about an obstacle you faced in your profession and how you overcame it. I think for a lot of students, you know, failure is a dirty word. It's something to avoid. And yet it happens to all of us. Um, and, and there's ways to 
frame it positively and, and learn from it, right? So think about something that, that you'd like to share here and um, I can't wait to hear what you're gonna say. <laughs> I realize this sounds super cliche, um, but I think changing the way that we might think about failure as a form of self-care is uh, a real way to approach what that means. Because we can have people tell us so many times that you know you, don't, you fall down so you can pick yourself up again, or you, you find ways to, to push through and power through obstacles. Um, but ultimately, you know, this is, you know, I'm only 36 years old, uh, but at least have gained a slight bit of wisdom. Um, like, I think there is a certain amount of just assuming that when something bad happens early on in your career, or you make a wrong decision, or, you know, you have a really lousy week where you're just kind of questioning, like, why am I doing this? Why am I here? Uh, the process of failure like that is the most intense fire of learning experience that you can get. And, you know, this is, this is me having gone through processes of, you know, I've had a job that was maybe not a good fit uh, and put me through a lot of stress. Or, you know, when I'm writing a story, like I just can't get something down or I can't get a source or, you know, I'm trying to work too many hours to make sure I can get one specific fact correct. Um, I have failed in ways that have made me better in my job and as a person. And I think that recognizing that it is uh, inevitable that something is going to go wrong, we're going to make the wrong decision. Uh, you know, that bad job that I had uh, turned into the current role that I have working in healthcare or communications and marketing, um, where I've learned more in four years about healthcare than I did, you know, the previous decade of existing in the workforce and having to deal with, uh, you know, healthcare and insurance and things like that. Um, so, I, you know, this isn't maybe a specific tangible example of something that I've failed at, because Lord knows there's plenty. Um, but I think trying to reframe it for me that recognizing that like, I'm going to screw something up today, uh, but it's going to be okay. And like, that's in recognizing that that's just a natural part of what's going to happen to me um, is just uh, something that can help you move on from that failure and learn from it. Yeah, I agree with everything Brian said. Um, and so a funny example, now it's funny, uh, that I thought of was, so I mentioned that I manage our video production, um, which involves, you know, acting as the producer on all of our new commercials, which is actually something I really, really love to do and discovered once I got this role. Um, so that was really fun. But we put out a holiday commercial and then a week later get this major fine for like $10,000 that we um, owe the music company for their copyright. And it was my mistake. I totally forgot to pay this bill or, you know, work with these people on getting this copyright tucked away. So that was a big mistake that I made, but I just kind of owned up to it. And now it's become a running joke because we put out this commercial every holiday season. And, you know, I have like this blaring note on my calendar and my boss always, you know, Alexa, did you pay the copyright music today? <laughs> so just, you know, rolling with the punches, knowing that it's a big deal in the moment, but then later on, you might laugh about it and you will never make the same mistake again. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a, a fun story for sure. Um, I think definitely the lesson of like not making the same mistake again. <laughs> so for social media in particular, obviously it's very public facing. Um, I've had the honor to work on some really high profile social media accounts that influence foreign policy. Um, so obviously mistakes can't be taken lightly. Um, so I think there's definitely a few lessons along the way of, of, of a missed tweet or an incorrect handle. Um, I think that <laughs> note is, is also an important lesson since I, I have the mic to um, young communications professionals that attention to detail is really important. Uh, always double, triple check your work and there's nothing wrong with asking 
someone else to um, read your tweet before you send it. Um, but I, I think probably in terms of career obstacles or mistakes, um, for there were a few positions um, or one position in particular that I held. And if you um, reach out to me, I can talk a little bit more about the details of it, but uh, it was my dream job. And it was really a challenging position um, for a variety of reasons. Um, and I think it was mostly difficult because uh, some of the managers of my position didn't know much about digital media. So it was, it was really difficult to kind of um, like knowing best practices and advocating for best practices. But I think it's actually uh, turned out to be sort of a good learning lesson to, for me to become stronger at uh, explaining why social media, for example, is important um, in terms of being a little bit more direct or, or firm um, in my ability to make recommendations and kind of back them up. And, and also um, there's a lot that kind of goes into social media. So being able to um, explain why cadence and timing and all of those kinds of things are important to consider in project management towards kind of getting to a, a final product. Um, a tweet that has a short video asset might have been in development for a month and a half, for example, um, but kind of, I think that is a lot of my role now as director is kind of keeping everybody on track uh, for the end goal uh, so that we can have a sort of flawless execution when that tweet goes out, especially when it comes to really high profile announcements um, or uh, uh, public statements. Thank you everyone for your thoughtful feedback and, and response to these questions. Um, we are at time, but I would like to ask one more rapid fire question. So final uh, word of wisdom for our students who are listening in. And anyone can jump in. I'm putting, putting you on the spot here. If there's a nugget of wisdom you'd like to share. I'll go um, with what I started with actually is just applying to jobs that interest you. I know if you have a set degree, um, you might have particular professions in mind. Um, and if something excites you when you read the job description, I don't think, and you have some of the qualifications, you know, I don't even think you need all of them, um, especially for entry level roles. Um, just apply and kind of see what happens. It might take you on a really exciting path. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'd say especially for entry level roles, even if you don't have all the qualifications, a lot of what it comes down to is your personality. And, you know, if you click with your boss, your future boss, um, and you have a very like go-getter attitude, a lot of times that goes a long way and they'll just want to hire you because they want to be around that type of person day to day. Um, and then I would also say, you know, don't limit out part-time opportunities in the very beginning. Um, I know it kind of depends on, you know, your personal financial situation. But I started out as a freelancer for, you know, two days a week, and I didn't know that someone was going to get fired a few months later, and that I would get that spot. So you really just don't know in the beginning. Yeah, I think... Having some experience is great and important, but a good employer should care about you as a person, perhaps more so than, you know, you tick every single box. So I, I think I encourage people often to think about what your life experience is and the way that what you have experienced and the way that you have been able to gain that can be meaningful to a company beyond just the fact that you have skill A, B, and C that they may be looking for, but that you as a human can provide something based on who you are and what you've done um, that can be valuable to them. And if they're a good employer, that's something that they should value. Yeah, I love that. I realized I wasn't muted, so I hope I wasn't making weird noises just then, but um, thank you everybody so much for your time again today. 
Um, this is the end of our recording. And again, students, please feel free to follow up with the CSPD if you'd like to get in touch with any of these folks. So thank you.